Good morning. Welcome to our liturgy celebration for the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Dear brothers and sisters, your light must shine before others. In both the Old and New Testaments, the secret to knowing the love of God is revealed. Share and love as God loves. God wants everyone to know the peace and joy we experience because he loves us and lights our way. He didn't give us his love to keep. We must share it with others. The mystery is the more we share his love and light, the more we know how loved we are. Before we begin our mass, please take a moment to silence your cell phones or any other electronic devices you have with you today. Our celebrant today is Monsignor Norm. Please stand and greet the presence of Christ in those around you. <clears throat> Please join us in singing our gathering song, Table of Plenty. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. The Gospel is going to tell us uh, what we are to be as the followers of Jesus Christ. We are to be salt and light for the world. So we want to ponder during this Mass, what is this exalted calling that we have in the world? And we begin now in humbly calling to mind ways in which we faltered along the path, that we have slipped off into some sin or weakness. Let us humbly pray together now for God's forgiveness and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. 
Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like a dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. 
Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit 
and power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It no longer, it is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of us like to add some salt to the foods that we eat to help bring out the flavor. I remember my dad liked to sprinkle salt on slices of tomato, corn on the cob, even a slice of watermelon or cantaloupe. He said they tasted better, so much better with the salt. Honey, I seem to do the same thing myself. Salt is also a great preservative. When large pieces of meat are hung up in, in the refrigerated locker room, they usually have salt involved in some way as a preservative for the meat. But what if the salt in the salt shaker loses its taste and doesn't add anything what do we do with it? 
Jesus today tells his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. We should be thinking today about how we live and share our faith. Is it possible that we are like salt that has lost its taste? Jesus also says, you are the light of the world. Jesus speaks of a light shining on a hill and a lamp placed on the lampstand in the house. Would this be our approach to living as a follower of Jesus? Or are we the lamp that is hidden away under the bushel basket? Our readings today help make this beautiful teaching even more practical for us. The prophet Isaiah provides God's simple rules for us. He says, share your bread with the hungry. Have I been sharing my bread with those who are hungry? We can support our local food banks. We can take a meal over to a family nearby who either has suffered great illness or a loss. Isaiah says, shelter the oppressed and the homeless. Am I concerned about those who are oppressed in today's world? Have I ever provided shelter for a homeless person? The prophet continues, clothe the naked when you see them. Fortunately, we don't see too many naked people on our streets, which is good. But there are places in the world where the naked are very much in evidence. They have no clothes. If you have quite a few clothes in your closet, what about gathering up a bunch of them and putting them in bags and bringing them over to the clothing bins right behind our parish hall? Our Italian Catholic Federation regularly takes of the clothing that we have donated over to a center where lots of clothing is brought and it is prepared to give to persons and families in need. There are lots of people here in Los Angeles who have only the clothes that they are wearing. And finally, the prophet says, do not turn your back on your own. Have I given up on certain members of my family? Do I say their problems are their problems, they're going to have to take care of it? <clears throat> These are simple rules from the scripture, and if we live by them, the prophet promises, your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. We do not heal from sin that wounds our hearts until we turn to bind the wounds of others. We cannot be religious people without being people of justice. Light will rise for us in the darkness when we lift the gloom of our brothers and sisters. Our religion is not simply that Baptism saves our souls, and Holy Communion makes us holy. But not mentioning any responsibilities for daily living. Jesus calls us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Not so terribly long ago in this world of ours, Families would have only one small lamp for their house, which was lit with kerosene. It was put clearly on a lampstand in the middle of the one-room house to provide light for all to see. At nighttime, a lamp lighter would go through the city streets lighting the street lamps filled with kerosene, one lamp at a time. And if you were standing off on a hill a little ways away, 
you would not see the lamplighter at all, but you would only see the growing light of each lamp along the street. The lamplighter remained largely invisible. And perhaps that is the picture of of the disciple of, of Jesus. We make our walk through the world slowly, lighting lamps with the light that is within us. It is not our own light that we offer, but it is the light of Christ. We are not of great importance, but only the one that we hope to make known. I think it would be true to say that our credibility, the credibility of our parish, the credibility of Jesus' message, and the credibility of the entire church is on the line every single day. I saw a story in a little magazine called The Word Among Us. It's a scripture magazine. The author indicated that it's a true story. It was very interesting. It's about Jim and his wife, Susan, devout Catholics, who move into a home that happens to be next door to a very wealthy Muslim family. And they enjoyed a a friendly and cordial relationship. But over the course of the next year, the Muslim family's business imploded and they had to declare bankruptcy. They lost everything. They were living in the house waiting to be evicted with little food or money. And all their friends seemed to have abandoned them. But Jim and his wife were aware of their situation. They emptied their own refrigerator and their pantry and gave as much as they could to their struggling neighbors. They also loaned them money. They continued doing this for nearly a year until things turned around and the Muslim family gradually dug their way out of the bankruptcy. And the story ended up with this final detail. The Muslim family in the coming year felt very drawn to become members of Christianity because of the selfless care they had received from their neighbors. Remember this week, this week that someone near you needs your light. Perhaps it will be the light of your charity or concern. Perhaps it will be the light of the testimony that you can give to the truth and to justice. Look for a concrete way to lift the gloom for a friend or a stranger this week. We are not to be lights hidden under a bushel basket. We are meant to be lights placed on a lampstand so that all can see. We must not be salt that has lost its taste, but through our prayer and our worship, we find that we are called to bring flavor, the flavor of Christ Jesus to the world. It is the wonderful taste of God's truth and the sweet taste of a more just society for all people that we can help to bring about. Let us join together now in our profession of our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us man and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Called by Christ to be the salt of the earth and light for the world, let us pray to the Father for all our needs. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, may the Lord continue to inspire him in sharing the message of God's mercy and his desire for people to know and love him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work for justice, may the Holy Spirit give them courage and guide them in shining the light of truth among the powerful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn that the grieving process will bring them one day to healing and wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the celebration of today's Mass, May it inspire us to carry the light of the good news to those in our families, workplaces, schools, and neighborhoods. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations, especially in the archdiocese, for men and women, may God inspire them to follow his call, and may he give them the gift of understanding to discern their service in the church, in the priesthood, in the diaconate, or consecrated life, especially our seminarians, Deacon Enrique Peseno and Tommy Green. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, may they experience the healing power of Christ, especially Darlene, Allers and Emilio Sanchez. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they know the everlasting light and peace of the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of the Mass here this morning, for the peaceful repose of the souls of Mr. and Mrs. Tony Lulo, and for the intentions that are written in our book of prayer and any other intentions that we remember in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for the light of grace and love your Son Jesus brought into our world of sadness and shadows. Help us to keep his light burning brightly in our lives. On seeing this light, 
others will find their way, and so you will be glorified. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you please join with us in singing, Christ be our light. brothers, my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, 
the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may now become for us the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Amen. 
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Dorothy and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope and Jose, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior and Jesus Christ. Power and the glory are you. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other 
the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our song for communion is Here I Am, Lord. I will 
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we have a prayer now for the next generation parish. Good and gracious God, we at St. Dorothy Parish, striving to adhere to your call, seek your blessing, wisdom, and love as we continue our journey in the next generation parish process. May we courageously stand together in your truth, humbly recognizing the gifts you have placed in each of us. May our actions through the care, respect, and dignity of all human life, with a Christ-like service toward those we encounter, shed light on our love of the Eucharist. We ask this and all things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated for a few moments. This Monday, tomorrow, February the 6th, we are celebrating the feast day of St. Dorothy, our patron saint. We will have two Masses, 9 o'clock in the morning, not 8.30, but 9 o'clock because of our feast day, and then 6 o'clock in the afternoon. And during the day, we will have many opportunities to come and pray. Will be uh, One of the hours will be with the Carmelites here. We will have um, various groups, perhaps leading the rosary at various times through the day. And we will have that all during adoration here in the church, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And so the adoration chapel will actually be closed tomorrow during the daytime hours um, because we will be having the adoration here. And we will have, we have a relic of St. Dorothy that will be, you will be able to venerate that tomorrow. We will have a six o'clock evening mass. We will be, the priest will be concelebrating together. And, um, and then following the mass, there will be a reception, refreshments over in the parish hall. So it should be a very, very nice feast day for us. Please come and join. St. Dorothy's School and Parish will be having its annual dinner dance and auction, Mardi Gras style, on Saturday, February 18th at the Glendora Country Club beginning at 6 o'clock in the evening. Please visit the school website to order your tickets for the dinner dance. Now, they're only going to be available one more day tomorrow. February 6th, though, be sure, either today or tomorrow, uh, the school website, stdorothyschool.org, and you'll find a place there where you can order uh, tickets. It's a, it's, we haven't had it now for a couple of years, but this is one of the wonderful events of our year. And the, uh, we have a, a, a silent auction as part of that, and we are uh, hoping and uh, inviting you, if you wish to give, uh, make a donation of some type of a gift. Could be a new Tesla, or <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be that. It could be some kind of a nice gift that you would like to have as part of the silent auction. If you just want to make a, a mon monetary donation, you can, and, and they will purchase other gifts for the auction. So, but that is all moving right along. Our 930 choir um, is going to be returning for the Lenten season, and we would like to invite you to join the choir. Uh, rehearsals will begin Wednesday, February 15th at seven o'clock here in the church. Information can be found on our website, St. Dorothy, St. Dorothy.org. 
So please pass the word to anyone you know who might be interested. So we're looking for some new singers. You don't have to be good enough for the Metropolitan Choir. You just have to have a wonderful, simple voice, perhaps, that we can, that will give glory to God right here at St. Dorothy. Since 1993, Together in Mission has served the most impoverished parishes, schools, and families in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles in providing essential funding. Our 2023 Together in Mission commitment campaign goal for St. Dorothy this year is $90,080. And our campaign will begin next Sunday, February the 12th. Uh, the theme this year is Shine His Light. And we thank you for your generous support in making an important impact in our communities. Our confirmation year two candidates will be on retreat the weekend February 17th through the 19th. There are 35 candidates preparing for confirmation. Please keep them in these days and weeks in your prayers. Tuesday, February 28th, coming near the end of the month, uh, St. Dorothy School will be hosting a Red Cross blood drive over in the parish hall from 10 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. All donors will be receiving a $10 Amazon e-gift card. So that is Tuesday, February 28th. We always have a good turnout. So and. Blood is critically needed in these days. So you can register for our blood drive at redcross.org and then scroll around until you find St. Dorothy, uh, our St. Dorothy Drive and sign up under the title of our parish, please. Walk-ins are also welcome on the day of the blood drive. Now the last announcement is uh, kind of important. On Friday, February 17th, at seven o'clock in the evening, a very significant basketball game is going to take place. I'm not speaking about the Lakers or the Clippers. This is a game between the priests of the archdiocese and the seminarians of the archdiocese. Someone is gonna be boss. It might be the seminarians. This game is taking place at Chaminade Middle School out in Chatsworth. It's not such a terribly long drive. Last year the game was in Oxnard and I traipsed all the way up there. And it is a most wonderful game. Tommy Green, whom we've been praying for so much, he is uh, in his final year at St. John's. He's going to be on the seminarians team He's formidable. You don't want to run into him on the basketball court. Now, in the back of the church back there on the bulletin board on, over on your left side, there is a beautiful poster about that event. And there's a little, one of those little uh, squares where you take a picture of it, and it will allow you, if you want to go to the game, you can go right on there and purchase your tickets just from that little icon back there. Um, we will, it, the game will also be live stream. Um, I'm not sure if it's on the, um, it's probably from the, from that school out there. We'll be live streaming the game, but Father Ron's going to try to get us a, a feed of the game into our parish hall. Uh, so we're going to see if he's successful in arranging that, but that's the game. So that's uh, one that we would like to support all the seminarians especially. Deacon Phil wanted to play, but I told him it's only the priests and the seminarians. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Please stand. I believe there's coffee and donuts outside. Please come and join your fellow parishioners for a little while. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Will you please join us in singing, Lead Me, Lord. <laughs> 